all the strange and secretive creatures there are in Madagascar, there is one that was the biggest challenge of all to film. It lives in the most remote forests. It's nocturnal and it's very rare. There's something in there. It's also dangerous. It's the fossa. The team traveled to the dry western forest, which is the fossa's stronghold. Even the people living right at the edge of the forest won't venture in at night. <laughs> the fossa is Madagascar's most fearsome predator. Even the team's guide, Jean, isn't too keen. I'm scared of fossa, even though I'm guide here, yeah, since the fossa is very strong and uh, it may attack people. But the team were not to be put off. They were joined by scientist Mialana Lurs. She has been studying the fossa for three years, but even she doesn't know a great deal. They usually have a secretive life and it's difficult to observe them, especially because they are mostly solitary. It's always but Mia has a plan. She explains to director Emma Napa that she's already fitted some of the fossa with radio collars. Although they can't pinpoint an individual fossa, in the mating season the collars can reveal where they're gathering, around big trees where males court females. Jean goes in search of a likely courtship tree. To look for the tree where the fossa mate in this place, it's it's hard, but uh, we work together. Using Mia's data, the team head for a likely spot. Jean finds signs that Fossa may have been using this tree for courting. So now the team must go into the forest at night. They carefully light the courting tree with infrared lights, visible to a camera but invisible to the naked eye. It means the team are working in the pitch dark. At night, the forest comes alive. For hours, the team listen and wait. Cameraman Kevin Flay heads deeper into the forest. The thing is, it's really, really black. So you're just relying on your hearing all the time. It's pretty unnerving because you just don't know where they are. Because occasionally you might hear a twig break or some rustling leaves. These people who live in villages and they don't have torchlight and they they just hear this thing coming in to their village. It must be, you know, it must be pretty frightening. I can definitely hear something moving out there. Then Mia hears a distant call. <coughs> and then suddenly the lights go out. Next morning the team find the cause. The lighting cable has big teeth marks in it. We found that the wire was broken. That was eaten by the fossa. It was amazing. And that's not all. The fossa tried to steal something from this bag. See, the fossa, you know, the fossa is really clever and see, eat anything, even, even your shoes. In the dry season, with little to eat, it seems that fossa will have a go at anything. The following night, it's back into the forest. For several hours, there's nothing. 
But then those eerie sounds begin again. And suddenly, out of the darkness, they're right there. At last, the team get their first good look at these extraordinary animals. Through the camera, they're transformed, elegant, relaxed, and totally at home in the pitch black forest. These are two males and they seem in no hurry to leave. And then Jean finds a reason why. Up in the tree, there's a female. One of the males climbs the tree to try his luck with her. Eventually, they start to mate and they continue their liaison until dawn. It's a rare chance for Kevin to capture shots of the fossa by day. Other males start to gather around the mating tree. It's an astonishing sight. Thanks to the night filming, Mia has learnt a little more about their behaviour, but she's concerned. Her data shows that this huge forest may only have ten females left in it, and that's not nearly enough. This beautiful and enigmatic creature may be critically endangered, and yet we still know so little about it. As with so much of Madagascar's wildlife, the challenge will be to discover more before it's too late. In the next episode, I'm on a very personal journey. Fifty years ago, when I was filming in Madagascar, I acquired the egg of a giant extinct bird. Now I'm trying to discover what that bird's extinction might reveal about the fate of Madagascar's precious wildlife today.